so today we have Anwin. Hi, Anwin. Is it Anwin or Anwin? It's Anwin. Anwin. Interesting. Okay. Where are you from? If you don't mind me asking. How far back? Cameroon, if you want to go that far back. Oh, you're from Cameroon? Nice. Oh, you actually know where it is? You're one of the few people that's like, where's that? I was like, yeah, close to Nigeria. would be like, oh, okay. People don't know where Cameroon is? Quite a few people. They know the big guys, isn't it? South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, maybe the Egypt because everybody wants to see the pyramids and that's about it. Or maybe the safaris. They might know where Kenya is, which is not where wow. the safaris happen, but you know. Are you serious? I know where I know where Cameroon is because I know um, Cameroon, they speak French as long as, as well as Congo. And, you know, I'm Haitian, so of course I, I know. I know. So You're mixed. That's, that's, yeah. No, yeah I don't know exactly where my... Well, I know that my lineage on my mom's side um, came from Congo. So that's as far okay. as I know. That's all I know for now. Um, okay. I know where Cameroon is. I'm very familiar. Um, <laughs> I haven't been though. I have not been to the continent of Africa at all, but I need to go. So how's life going, Anwin? Life is good. It's another sunny day, you know. I'm above earth. I'm, I'm not, what's it? I'm six feet up. You're six feet above ground. That's the word. Yeah. yeah, no, it's good. I'm grateful. There's a lot to be grateful for, for sure. Six feet and above ground. I use that. I say that sometimes. Not often, but I say that sometimes. Grateful to be above ground because, yeah, we couldn't have w woken up today. That would have been. That's very that true. Is, that would have been. So how did Anwin get here today? I turned on my laptop. Say what? I said I turned on my laptop. Oh. Sorry, I'm being silly. <laughs> <laughs> of course yes you turned on your laptop but i mean like, um, how did emma get yeah, here <laughs> sure. i got yeah i got yeah i was just messing um so basically originally from london uk um kind of brought and bred uh moved around quite a bit because that was with the embassy mm. and currently between orlando and jamaica kind of escaping the uk the uk winter trying to anyways my parents are not too chuffed about it but that's all right. And, you know, just getting on with it, you know, just trying to show the kids what the world is made of so they can taste it, feel it, touch it, rather than just read about it. Oh, wow. Okay, so you moved around a bit. Father was in the embassy and you're currently in the UK. No, no, I'm you're... not. From, I'm from the UK. You're from so the UK. Brit, yeah, Brit, brown and bread. Currently in Jamaica. Jamaica, that's it, that's it. Yeah. That's, how is Jamaica? It's okay. It's, it's, it's all right. It's okay. very, very sunny. You know, moving from one island to the next is very different from Florida, for sure. But then the climates are very similar. So being between the two is very easy, yeah. I would say. It's a bit like the UK and France. So it's okay. It's a good change of environment. And the, the kids again get to see somewhere else, how the others live. And yeah, it's it's been a good experience so far. Okay, because I've been to Jamaica. I went to Jamaica during COVID. COVID? Yeah, during COVID. Unfortunately, the island was locked down and they had, you know, rules and regulations and they had a specific time that everybody had to be within the house. But I did, I enjoyed Jamaica. I have to go back. I really want to go back. Where in Jamaica are you? Are you in Kingston or are you outside of Kingston? Yes, Kingston. You're in Kingston. Yeah. Have you gone because to um, Bob Marley's house? The museum or the house? The house. I've not, no. I'm not a Bob Marley kind of person, so oh. it wasn't really my on the places to see. And because it's so small as well, there's not much to do. You have the Bob Marley Museum, then you have, I think it's Trenchtown, it's called. Uh -huh. you go down to Trenchtown to visit. Like, I couldn't justify, what was it, $40? I couldn't justify it because I was like, I'm not a Bob Marley fan. $40 to see where he hang out. Yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. If I was a fan, I would be like, yeah. Let's do this. I want to touch what he touched. Although so many people have touched it before me, so I just I don't think any of his DNA is ever just left on me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Well, that's cool. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, do you plan on moving anytime soon after Jamaica? Oh, well, we're based in Orlando, so. Oh. Jamaica is just. Oh, okay. I'm getting it now. It's clicking. It's <laughs> clicking. Okay. Awesome. Now. And when I read as you filled out, you went through like those personal financial challenges and things like that and overcoming this and it was like the the catalyst for your growth. Let's tap yes. into that. How oh. what what happened for that to be your catalyst for growth? Like what type of financial struggles did you experience for it to uh, so, be your catalyst? 
So I guess my household is very, I would say, very traditional. Mm -hmm. Dad kills the bear, mom cooks the bear kind of scenario. And then the kids were kind of catered for. We didn't really have to do anything. And I think that's kind of where it kind of started. Okay. You know, like normally at home, you kind of start the training at home. Yep. But none of the financial training happened at home. It was pretty much, you ask, you get what you get, you don't get it. Yeah. You know, you move on. You don't have yeah. much, much to it. Then when I left home, I left home first went to boarding school mm -hmm. again another cocoon so I kind of was from cocoon to cocoon so from dad's cocoon to boarding school cocoon and then now I was left all on my own and I hit 18 and in the UK at 18 that's when you're officially an adult so you can apply for the credit cards and the loans and everything and because I was a student as well they, they, they market to students really well yeah. I'll give them that they do but you know all your student cards and you know student discounts and if you get your card today you get you know 50% off your first shopping all that jazz um so I went for all of it I fell for it to sinker everything I fell for it and I applied and I got I got given all of this basically and because I came from a space where everything was taken care of for me to a space where I'm putting myself in these situations and I don't know why, but probably some fairy was going to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, got myself in some serious, serious debt mm. and never really realized that you have to pay it back. Mm. You kind of know you do, but it doesn't quite sink in because you do not cater for it. You know, like for you to eat, you have to go to the supermarket and do your shopping. Yep. You don't just eat. When it came to credit, I just ate. I didn't realize the whole go to the supermarket part and, you know, the food prep and all that. So that is kind of where it all started. And it spiraled, it spiraled out of control that not even the part time job was catering for it as well. And it wasn't something that I was willing to go to my parents with because there was a lot of shame and embarrassment around that because mm -hmm. I got myself into the situation. And also, you know, being the flyest person in uni, handle was not... <laughs> was not important no more. So it got to a stage where my house was um, at risk as well. Oh, wow. And my car got taken away because I wasn't keeping up with the payments. So that it was the bam, slap in the face, <laughs> wake up um, when the bailiffs took my car. Oh, wow. The bailiffs, yeah. So when they took my car, I was like, oh, it's real mm -hmm. it's happening how why when like yeah. all the questions that are, that are um, coming to me and then it was also because again my parents helped me get the card there was also that piece as well like how do I explain this and being the eldest as well mm -hmm. eldest of four it was like hello you're the eldest lead by example what are you showing your sisters <laughs> what are you showing your siblings what is going on with you <laughs> um so that is kind of where my wake-up call happened because i didn't want to be in that space again i didn't want to be in the position where you know that you know when trucks are reversing and they make that sound mm -hmm. that is the sound the baby's tow truck does yeah so like ptsd yep. <laughs> so when when I, so I didn't want to be, you know, afraid or be anxious every time I heard that sound. Mm, okay. So that is where it kind of started. And money mindset wasn't a thing. It wasn't in my sphere of understanding. It wasn't around the people that I was around. There was nothing like money mindset. Right. You had money or you didn't have money. So you yeah. stopped. So I started like, I would say the re-education of Lauren Hill um, kind of scenario. Oh. Where I started going through and I think my very first book was, Jen Sincero and I forgot the name of the book now but hers was my first money mindset book and then I did um, Lucky Bee mm -hmm. by um, Dennis Duffel Johnson okay. and hers was my second one as well then I went into the whole um, Think and Grow Rich and you know Napoleon Hill and went into that sphere and that's kind of where I started with oh so this was all what it was all about and the weird thing was that I was working in the bank at that time as well wow you know like, what I've heard of the, like people working in the bank and, and like people that deal with money every day they're better at managing other people's money than their own yes I've it's a bit like doctors are the worst patients yes they are yeah so that was that was it as well. It kind of started and then it was a ripple effect of one thing after the other and being in the space that I was in and moving from where I was moving from, where it was very much victim space. Ah. This happened to me rather than I made this happen to I made this happen so I could make anything happen. So I was moving from victim to ownership to taking responsibility yes. of, you know, I did this. If I can do A, I could do B. Yep. So let's do B and kind of shifting from a space where 
I started um, creating my own ideologies around, you know, money mindset and how it worked for me. And I am a compulsive spender, but again, with the general public or the general dogma of what money mindset is, is that there's a right way of doing things and there's a wrong way of doing things. And I don't subscribe to that whatsoever. I don't think there's a right or wrong. Personally, I don't think there's a right or wrong about everything. Everything is about context. Okay. Everything is about context. So even compulsive spender, like, okay, I am this characteristic and the likelihood of me being this characteristic is very high. Okay. because that's who I am yeah so how do I leverage this so that it's building my wealth rather than depleting my wealth if I know that I I am a compulsive spender are there any things that trigger me and I notice again it's emotional based so when certain whether it's celebration or um misery <laughs> I tend to go shopping but then it doesn't happen every single day. You don't have that impulse. You know, let's say retail therapy, you don't have the impulse for retail therapy every day. Yeah. So when you look at your patterns, you'd be like, oh, I could see it happen, you know, three or four times a year. Okay. How do I cater for that? Because those three or four times a year, let's say we have 12 months in a year and four out of those 12 months is my spending spree. So mm. I've got four months that I need to cater for to use nine months to cater for. So the nine months that I'm not spending, I am putting money away for the time that, that you emotional burst happens so that then when it does happen I am okay with it yeah because the worst thing you can do is when you spend money then feel guilty about it yeah which is where a lot of business owners are as well like when they pay their taxes they're like oh, like no that's not the kind of energy you want to attach to it because it always comes back full circle it does so I'm this kind of person how do I make sure that the things I'm doing are giving me the result and the outcomes I want and the things about my behavior and my character that are not necessarily giving me the results I want how can I mitigate it so I know I have this emotional race cell therapy it doesn't happen every day so if i am putting x amount away every single month for when that happens yeah when it happens i'm happy to do it and it caters for my emotional being right because i know that is what makes me feel good and then that is done and dusted then i'm not taken away from anything else yeah because i kind of was preempting the fact that this was going to happen the same characteristics i could say again can be used for people that are are over cautious so they say everything mm -hmm. which then means that they hoard the money and then the money is not working for them so how do we cater to the need to hoard money but also cater to the fact that we want the money to work smarter for them and balancing those two that okay with your characteristics there's always a duality to everything there is nobody is perfect so the things that we say are really really good can then be really really bad as well like you could be confident yeah to the point where you're arrogant yes there's a duality so how can we be confident but then make sure that we do not go so far that we start coming across arrogance okay. it's the same thing when it comes to your money mindset it's like okay i have these characteristics yeah i need to spend my money mm -hmm. because i need to spend money to make money so rather than let's say buying the bag or buying the shoes or buying let me see if i could buy the company or a share of that company that has that bag that has that shoe and so forth because what i discovered about myself is that it wasn't necessarily what i was buying it was the process of buying mm. so you could take me to lowe's or you could take me to you know a brick and mortar of any sort and i was just be excited oh my god i'm buying screwdrivers it's like i mean it's a screwdriver it's like but i'm going shopping i'm buying a screwdriver i'm going to go buy a plant i'm going to go buy you know a shelf it's just just excitement so knowing that is then okay if i get excited about shopping i'm definitely going to get excited just sitting around looking at oh what shares am i going to buy this month or just sitting and like oh look at this new you know startups that are looking for funding which one interests me always putting at the back of my mind again understanding my risk and also how long i'm going to have it out there for and my risk appetite and the time horizon so this is all to say knowing yourself is the most important thing and working with yourself um, research was done with companies by Gallup that employees that work to their strength bring the company 40% more revenue than companies that are trying to work on their employees' weaknesses. So a lot of the times, general knowledge you would say, oh, you know, work on your weaknesses, you want to strengthen your weaknesses, you want to make us like, let the weaknesses be, double down on your strength. Because the more you can double down on your strength, it's more profitable in what, whether monetarily, emotionally, physically, 
you know, than you trying to strengthen your weaknesses. You're better off mitigating your weaknesses. So how do I put boundaries in place and fences to make sure that when I go, you know, bull in a China store, I'm not breaking everything. Ah. But I know I'm a bull, so hey, please take me to the ranch. Right. That is where my strength is. That's where I should be spending more of my time than trying to make sure that I'm not breaking things in a China store. You understand? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, got it. Now, let's back up a little bit. You mentioned that yeah. you were taken care of in the house, in the home. Yeah. Were you ever introduced to finances in the home? Like, were you ever told, like, this is how you balance a checkbook, this is what you do, this is... I mean, I know of a... I'm Caribbean descent, so I get it, and I understand. So no one taught you how to do... No financial literacy was being taught in the in the house? Mm, no, no, not at all, not at all. I'm thinking it through now. I'm like, maybe I should ask my sisters. Um, but no, there was never a sit down this wow. is that kind of i think my level of financial literacy you know when you're learning money at school yeah and making sure you get the right change yeah period that was it <laughs> that is money that was money yeah there was no no then i got my bank account and that was, that was pretty much it wow i mean yeah it's amazing no. how you know particularly within our community, whether it is African American, Caribbean, or African, a lot of us are not taught financial literacy. And mm. when we go out into the big world and we're trying to balance a checkbook and do all this other stuff, we end up in a situation like yourself. Trust me, I've been there too. <laughs> been there as well. I've heard the, the tow truck come and repo my car. I have been there. I've experienced what you've experienced. But as I got older and at my um my age right now, I'm it's it, I feel like sometimes I'm behind, but I think I'm supposed to be right where I'm supposed to be in terms of financial mm -hmm. literacy and learning that because as I'm looking at what you have mentioned uh, previously um, with the whole spending and saving, I saw that on both ends of the spectrum. You know what I'm saying? I, I saw from one parent uh, spending, spending, spending because you have to. And then I saw from another parent saving, 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 but don't spend. So I didn't have the best. Well, growing up, I didn't have the best relationship with money, money because like you, I was just spending because that's what my mama did. She spent. But, if, but I always saw it coming back one way or another. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting how our community doesn't necessarily, we don't learn that in an early age. But if we look at our counterparts, they have trust set up, their parents set up their trust, their parents, you know, give them a, a bank account, their their names are on there, the parents add them to their credit card for their credit. And then by the time that they hit college or are graduating college or entering like their 30s, there's money set aside for them to buy a home or invest in a business or things like that. So I'm wondering, have you, I don't know, do you have children? Yes, I do. So have, since you've learned all of this and done this yourself, are you also teaching your children financial literacy and the things that you have um, acquired throughout the years? The knowledge you Oh, have. they cannot help it. That is what I do day in, day out. They have a mom that works at a bank and then they have a mom that helps with, you know, financial management. So the amount of meetings I have, the amount of lives I have, they just, hear it and observe oh, it nice. and then can kind of regurgitate it to me i was like oh so you guys are listening they're like no you just talk <laughs> so there is that element but also i was very intentional okay. in regards to you know the games we play if we go mm -hmm. like all the way from very very young we had the poker chips okay so they used to earn poker chips and for every chores that they did and then they would turn the poker chips into money and then they had the money so that that way it extends my money for me as well because i think it was five poker chips for a pound so every time they had five poker chips they'll give me the five poker chips and i gave them a pound and that is the way and then they did whatever they wanted with it and as time went by they started realizing that you know if i put this amount away i could get x i could get y and i always made sure that i wasn't there to buy everything that they desired that the things that were like lower costs yeah. I would allow them to earn it and then buy it for themselves. So that started from really, really young when they were able to actually start doing chores like, you know, make me a bet, the, the smallest things. And then as they grew older, again, you know, um, giving them an allowance. And then when they had their bank account, putting the allowance there, I was like, okay, you spend the money that they, the way you, can, you you want to. Right. And also me being a small business owner, yeah. I employed them as freelancers. 
really? during their holidays. So either they'll be, you know, editing Canva for me or they might be editing, you know, some videos for me. Like, you know, the short form videos, not anything too lengthy. They might be doing that for me. Or what else have I given them to do? Like little, little things like that that they'll do in the business and I'll pay them $5 an hour. And then they'll do a couple of hours and then I'll pay them. And I taught them as well how to, you know, clock their time, how to raise an invoice, how to chase their invoice because mama can be late. <laughs> so how to chase your invoice as well and how to do it formally, not just, oh, mom, you still owe me 20. I was like, you didn't follow up. Sorry. Wow. I don't know about anything you're saying. You didn't follow up. So just little things like that, that they get into the practice of it. And it's helped a lot. They're very, very on the money, very on the money. And I, I am like that as well. For me, for better, for worse, everything for me evolves around money. Either there's a money gained yeah. or there's a money spent. Yes. Okay. And whether it's gained or spent, there's always then that final result. So if it's spent, what are we spending it on? What is the results? You know, what are we gaining from it? And if it's gained, how are we gaining it? How much time are we spending to gain it? You know, all of that. And it's always understanding then for them that it's a means to an end. Yeah. It's an energy flow. What kind of energy are you attaching to the money you're spending or earning? What kind of energy are you attaching to the money that you're wishing for or you want to manifest um, within your reality? And being very cognizant of that, especially now that they're going through their teen years as well. Emotions are like Shakespearean drama, tragedies, like the world ends today, this very moment, <laughs> you know? I get it. So again, managing all of that for them no not managing all of that for them allowing them to manage it for themselves allowing them to express all of that allowing them to be aware that it's okay to cry it's okay to be angry it's okay to be whatever it is this emotion is i don't have to deal with it you deal with it but let's not dwell on it Okay. Because also the thing I've noticed as well, and I don't know if it's just an um, African thing or a Caribbean thing or a black thing, I don't know what thing it is, but there's this very boys don't cry. Boy, I'm like, sorry, what? Your tear ducts are there for decoration. Explain this to me. So I'm very, all your emotions are valid. They're all very valid, but let's not dwell in it. Yeah. Because everything is seasonal, it comes and it goes. So let's you know learn how to get through learn how to focus on it but a lot of it as well i started noticing a lot of societal push for boys especially we coming from the uk as well yeah there's a very black boys are ex black boys black boys black boys i'm like sorry my child is called john yeah let's focus on john i don't care if he's blue purple green you know yeah let's talk about john yeah so that's one of the reasons why we started moving as well because i was like it was getting younger and younger where they were getting labeled mm. and I, i'm not for that because i didn't get labeled mm. it could be again because i was in my bubble mm -hmm. so a lot of a lot of the diplomatic kids mm -hmm. were all you know a bit third culture kids where our parents are one culture we're growing up in one culture and we're doing something else in another culture yeah so we're all a bit displaced so we kind of could relate to each other yes but then we were in our own bubble in a country where we did not necessarily interact with that country 100 percent yeah so i had to appreciate that that i grew up in various bubbles regardless of where i was i was in a bubble they did not have that they were civilians so how do i cater for that so that i could give them that bubble so that when they go into the world they are not carrying what the world is telling them they are yeah they're going there being john mary joseph yep they are going there being them yeah and then they can face the world rather than going there being the world yep which was one of my things so that is why we can move that is why i like we're in jamaica as well where like they're just one of many literally one of many until they do not speak you would not know where they are from because they just blend in yep yeah that's kind of it was important yeah that's that's good because um i grew up in white spaces so i totally understand you know what you're doing with your children and how you're raising them um because it's difficult to navigate in white spaces especially if you're the only one and then when it comes to corporate it's always your own you're the only one in the office or maybe not the only one but the other one that looks like you not necessarily on the same page as you when it comes to camaraderie in the office but um that's admirable and that's 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 really good how you instill that within your children like hey this is how the world views you but at the same time you yourself you should know who you are you should know this is your name this is where you come from this is 
your culture or this is that this and the third you should not let somebody define who you are and let them tell you that you're not good enough or anything like that so that's very admirable i hope i get to instill that in my children see i'm uh, i'm one of those mama bears i know i'm gonna be one of those mama bears you know what i mean like you're not gonna tell my son or my daughter they're not xyz because it's not them you're gonna have to deal with me so Mm. i'm one of those type. i know i'm gonna be one of those type of parents but at the same time it's really good to see that it's good to see black mothers or african mothers however you label yourself i don't want to mislabel you but it's great to see mothers of color teaching their children financial literacy and also teaching their children like you are the ish and this is who you are and this is your name and this is who you represent and make sure that no one comes around and tells you anything otherwise the confidence you know what i'm saying building up that confidence i love seeing it this is great to hear this is really good to hear but my 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 last question before we go what is one and piece of advice that you can give to anybody that is starting on their financial journey no matter the age or whatever they look like Okay, this is a quote that I always say, right? And then I'll break it down. Don't let the limitations of your eyes limit your mind. For the longer you're not taking action, the more wealth you're losing. So always start with your mind. Do not worry too much about what you see. Again, I could make you see anything. Hello, that's what magicians are all about. I could make you see anything, but what happens in your mind is unique to you and cannot be tampered with, although it has been. That's why we're trying to get it back to the state of being. That's why we're trying to take it back to the state of, you know, at the point of creation where it was you. Yeah. It wasn't contaminated, so to say. It wasn't influenced by everything else. So trying to go back to that space. So this is to say, start with you. There is no right, there is no wrong. There is what you are trying to achieve, where you are trying to get at. So everything that you need to be, anything that you need to do, anything that you need to have to get you there, that is how you determine then what next steps is, what you need to do, where you need to be to be able to achieve that. So when it comes to money, when it comes to finances, there is no right or wrong. There is how can I get there? And what am I doing that benefits that? And what am I doing that is not beneficial? And how can I diminish its impact? That is it. So don't let the limitations of your eyes limit your mind. Don't let the limitation of your eyes limit your mind. That's great. That was a great piece of advice. I like that. Who says that? Who, 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 uh, who said that was you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right, quoting your own self. I'm here for that. This, that, I love that. I'm here for it. Okay, well, this is great. This is great, Edwin. I appreciate you coming on, talking to me about your life, how you overcame, how, I don't want to say overcame, but how you turned, how you didn't, how did you say it again? How do you, you didn't let your eyes. Oh, limit my mind. Limit your mind. I love that. I love no. this place. I'm glad. I'm happy that you you turned that around. You didn't let your eyes limit your mind because you were like at that point, nah. I gotta learn how to uh, balance my checkbook. I gotta learn how to make my money work for myself. This is great. I appreciate you coming on, talking to me, and sharing. For having me. No problem. No problem. And everybody that is tuned in and watching, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next week for a brand new episode. Bye.